Corporate finance practice problem using one note. Net present value changing discount rate. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon left-hand side. We're down in the Practice Problems tab, and then in 1234, Net Present Value Changing Discount Rate tab. Also note, when using OneNote, take a look at the Immersive Reader tool. Our presentations up top are mirrored down in the text area, same name, same number, but with transcripts, transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing icon up, information is going to be up top, then we're going to go through the calculations on down below. We have a similar process as with prior presentations, looking at an initial investment and the projected future cash flows in the future. This time, however, we're going to be changing the discount rates so we can see the impact of different discount rates as we calculate the net present value. So we'll start off with the 10%. We'll go on down then to the 15% and the 20% and see the differences in our net present value calculation. So initial investment will be the 100,000. That's going to be the same all the way through our examples here. And then we can, we can imagine that to be equipment, we got project, investment in inventory that we expect then future cash flows years into the future years one two and three year one thirty thousand two eighty thousand three twenty one thousand and these are going to be in the future those will be the same as we go through the separate uh, components the discount rate then is going to be the 10 percent. you might hear that called the hurdle rate it might be called the required rate of return the cost of capital in essence we assume or expect that the amount of profit is in that discount rate. Therefore, when we calculate the net present value, which is one of the primary calculations we would do with a long-term type of project because it takes into account time value of money, if we get to anything above zero, then we have cleared that 10% and would think about picking up the project. Now, then we'll do the second one here. Same information, 100,000 investment, 30, 80, 21, year one, two, and three for 15% discount rate. And then same investment for the next component, 30, 80, 21, and 20% will then be the discount rate. So back to the original one here, the 100,000, 30,000 year one, 80,000 year two, 21, year three discount rate at the 10%. Now also note that if you were doing this in practice, in an excel worksheet then you would want to put this information basically in your data tab and then allow yourself to be able to pull all your cell references from this data so that you can then easily change something like the discount rate and everything will populate for you from there so just keep that in mind as we go through this we do have this in excel as well it's a little bit longer because you have to you know go through all the excel functions in them but uh, that's worth taking a look at, I believe, as well. So we have the net present value calculation that we'll be calculating here. We'll start off with the number of payments. I'm going to list out the payments in years, starting with year zero, which is the initial investment of the 100,000, one, two, and then three. Note that I'm listing these out, again, if it was in Excel, without anything else except the numbers here, so that when I have cell references, I can reference to those cells uh, easily. Then And that allows me not to have to hard code numbers. And then we've got the amounts, the negative amount for the 100,000. That's the initial investment in period one. And then period, I mean, sorry, period zero. And then in period one, two, and three, we have our inflows we expect to see in the future. This means that we have a net inflow. If we were to add up this column, the inflows over the outflows of 31,000. That would be like our net income if we were not taking into consideration time value of money. But we want to consider time value of money given the fact that this is a long-term project. So we will do the time value of money calculation on the right now. Note that we do have prior presentations where you could calculate this multiple different ways with a formula or with tables. We're going to do it here with basically an Excel calculation. So if you want to look into how or multiple different ways to calculate this, take a look at the prior section where we focus in on that. If you have a problem like this in practice or in a test question, it's, it, they could give you just three years and make you calculate it with a table and take away your financial calculator or Excel. But as these problems get longer, it gets more difficult to do that, given the fact that we have to do basically a present value of each of the years that are involved in Excel. It's quite easy, really great tool in Excel uh, to get used to. 
So we have the negative present value. This is going to be the rate. The rate's going to be that 10%. Notice in Excel, we made it an absolute reference by making a dollar sign before the B and the 8 so that we can then copy it down. Number of periods is 0. That's why the result is the same here. But I'm still going to put the formula in place so that we can then copy that formula down. That'll be the fastest way to go and it'll make the whole column uniform. Then we're going to say comma comma here and pick up the future value, which is the 100,000. Once again, the same number would be the result due to the fact that we're at time period zero. If we did the same thing to time period one, copying the formula down, then it would give us this formula, negative present value. The rate is the same. Notice it's the same cell. That's the 10%. Comma, number of periods. Notice that this moved down. It should be one now because we're one year out over here. It moved down in the cell reference because it's not an absolute reference, which is typically what we want in a table. Comma, comma, future value then is the 30,000, which we're present valuing back at the discount rate of 10% to 27,273. If we did that for the second year, the 80,000 we expect to receive in the second year discounted back two years at 10%, we're looking 66,116. Three years, the 21,000 discounted three years back at the 10% discount rate, we're at 15,778. If we sum this up then, the 100,000 and these three items, we get to the 9,166. Remember that anything over zero would mean that we cleared the hurdle rate of the 10% or the discount rate, the cost of capital, and therefore would be something that we might want to pick up. This, in other words, does not mean that we're only getting 9,000 profit after consideration of the time value of money with regards to like inflation. This takes into consideration typically what we expect to get in a return. Therefore, if this came out to be zero, that would mean that we had received the return because it's in the calculation up top as we do the time value calculations. If we want to know the actual rate that we have uh, received, then we might pick up the internal rate of return at that point. Obviously, if we compare this to another project, the further away from zero, generally the better. It could be a little deceiving if you have other projects with different amounts of the investment for example in different time horizons but the general rule is the higher this number the better and and then you can get more detail in terms of the internal rate of return now you do of course have a net present value calculation that you can do how down here as well in excel i don't find this as useful because i'd rather just do the table considering the fact that you still have to put this information in the format of a table to do this to do this calculation but it's the net present value and then you would pick up the rate which once again would be the 10%. And then this range, that range is going to be this range here. It actually picks up only periods one on, not period zero, which is the initial investment. Closing that up, and then we say plus the initial investment of the 100,000. That too gives us the 9,166. Now, if we did the same thing, same set of data, but we changed the rate to 15%, Note if you had this in Excel and you populated it all from this data with the 10%, then you can just simply change that 10% to 15 and you can multiple and you can work multiple different scenarios. You can change then of course these numbers as well, working multiple different scenarios as you go through different estimates that could be possible uh, in in different scenarios. So we're going but we're going to do it calculating it here again 15%. So same data but now we have the 15% discount rate, same setup 123 uh, on the years. And then we have our same cash flow starting point, negative 100,000 up front, then the 30 80 21 giving us the 31,000 net flow. Then we do our present value calculations, negative present value the rate now 15%. It's still picking up that absolute reference here on that rate this time, comma, number of periods, which would be zero this time, comma, comma, future value, the 100,000. We get the same result due to the fact that we're at period zero. If we copy this down, we get this formula, negative present value, the rate, 15%, absolute reference. You can see these two cells are the same, comma, number of periods move down from zero to one. So it would be one, you could hard code one, in other words, type it in to the formula, but using the formula here allows you to copy it down. So that's why this column is crucial, having the number here by itself, really helpful to copy it down, comma, comma, then we have the future value here, notice that this cell moved down to what would be the 30,000 discounted back to 2687. If we had then the 80,000 two years out discounted back two years now, 
at the 15%, we're at 6491 If we had the 21000 discounted back three years at the 15%, that gives us the 13808 Summing this up, we're at the 386 Versus before, at the 10%, we're at the 9166 uh, Same cash flow, only difference being the discount rate. Now, remember, that's kind of like our, our hurdle rate, meaning the fact that it's still above zero means that we might pick up the project. This does not mean that we're only making $386 after taking into account inflation. It means that we are making 50, above 15% rate of return uh, here because that's what we used as our discount rate. So anything above zero, we may still take on this project. So then uh, if we did our net present value calculation here equals the net present value, the rate once again would be the rate now 15%. And then the range would be this range, everything from one on down, not including the initial investment, closing that up plus the 100,000, which is a negative number, gives us that 386. You can do it that way as well. Note that this table, since you can copy and paste it down, if you copy, if you do it properly, is almost as easy as doing this formula. And you get the added benefit of seeing the discounts of each of each period, which I think can be useful it can be useful information oftentimes so if we did this again same information 100,000 30,000 80,000 21,000 year one two and three and now the discount rate is 20 percent let's see what happens this time we want a 20 percent return so that means we're saying we're only accepting this project basically if we get a return of 20 percent so as we do the net present value calculation if it's zero and above we would have cleared the 20 percent might then take on the project so we only pick up big projects because we want to we're good, we're good at getting returns. So we got the same thing, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then we've got our flows, which is the negative 100,000, 30, 80, and 21. We then do our present value calculations, negative present value, the rate, absolute reference, now being the 20%, comma, number of periods. is going to be picking up this cell, which of course is 0, making the amount the same at this point, comma, comma. Future value is the 100,000 gives us the same number because we do have zero in we're at time period zero <laughs> but if we copy it down then it does this to the second one to year one negative present value the rate same cell you can see now 20 percent comma number of periods is now one which is shown by this cell which is being copied down comma comma future value is now the 30,000 uh, 30,000, which again, that one copied down. You can see the difference in the cells reference here. That brings it back to 25,000. If we take the, the year two, 80,000, bring it back two years, discounting 20%, we get the 55, 556. If we take year three, the 21,000, discount it back three years at the 20%, we get the 12, 153. If we add them up, then we have the flow of 7,292 negative. So at this point, Anything that was negative, anything that happened to be negative here, means that we didn't clear the rate, which is 20%, pretty high rate, and therefore possibly wouldn't be picking up the project if we can pick up other projects for cost of capital was 20% or higher. So at that point, we would not be picking it up. You could do the same calculation with the net present value here. So you can see how, of course, the rate that you're using can have a significant impact on where you, on where you stand. So we calculate the rate. Up here, we cleared the 10% fairly fairly consistently here uh we we and the second one we barely cleared it at the 15 percent discount rate and then finally 20 percent not cleared at the 20 percent now if you wanted to find the actual rate of course then the rate at which this net present value calculation would be zero is what we call the internal rate of return the irr